What I'd like to do today is show you how to set up as far as the ball joint gauge on a McPherson strut type vehicle in order to measure both up and down and in and out movement. All right. Now I did set up the tripod here with this, the camera on it. I am just shooting where I am going to be as far as setting the ball joint gauge up. This is all I want you to do is to set up as far as that goes to that area there. What I'm going to do now first off is understand where as far as is the movement between as far as in the ball joint. Well the ball joint cup itself is mounted as far as to the lower control arm and the stud mounts into as far as the steering knuckle. So that's the two parts that we have to measure between. Okay. I'm going to show you first what we call up and down or axial movement. I'm going to clamp to the lower control arm with my vice grips. Just open them up. Okay, I've got my vice grips mounted to the lower control arm. I now can take my my neck of my dial indicator and I can move it anywhere where I can find a flat surface. Okay, I can use this area up here, I can use the bolt, or if I can make it all the way up to the top of the knuckle, I can move here. I'm gonna bring it right into this area here, right by as far as right on top of the knuckle. The reason why we can use that is because in this particular case, the steering knuckle is solid. Okay, so any movement would transfer directly through it. Okay, may I have that? Thank you. All right. So remember, when you're working with as far as the dial indicator, make sure that you take all of the free play out of the neck part here. And again, we can kind of wrap this right around to the top. It'll work out well that way. I can go right over the brake hose. That way I'm not gonna have a, a real tight curve. I'm gonna place my dial indicator into the neck and then I'm going to go ahead and compress the dial indicator so that I have some so I can see as far as the movement in both directions. You'll notice that I'm going to have to be able to get check travel in both directions. Once I've got all of the play that I need to out of there, I'm going to turn my cam here to lock the dial indicator in place. Maybe. There we go. Okay. So now I've got this as far as locked in place. At that point now, if I want, I can go ahead and zero this, okay, in order to make my measurement. So I just want to take a quick look here. And again, I'm just going to... Is this recording? Yeah, it's recording right now. And I'm just going to zoom in here just so you guys can take a... Again, I'm going to use this later so that others can see this. I just wanted you to see how the dial indicator is mounted there and you can see it's mounted to the lower control arm. Can we watch the video afterward? I'm going to back this back off again. All right. So in order to check movement on this, I'm going to take my pry bar and I'm going to pry down on the lower control arm. And again, guys, you can see here the dial indicator is not moving. So we're really not seeing any movement in that direction. Next thing I want to do is pry up, and you can see that the dial indicator is coming back to the same point that it was at prior to that, prior to where we started. That way I know I don't have any problem with as far as that goes movement up or down, okay? Now, next one I want to show you is going to be how to set this up as far as in order to measure in and out movement. Again, I really don't need to move my clamp, I'm just going to move my neck. You kind of hold the light there? Thank you. All right, I'm going to move around here to the back of the steering knuckle, and I'm going to line my dial indicator directly up. With the back of the knuckle, so I'm going to be straight in, into that area right there. And then again, I'm going to tighten this up to hold it into place. Okay? So my dial indicator is ready to go again. Again, I can zero this. And then I'm going to use my pry bar along with a 
Where did the lug nuts go, guys, for this? Hand me one of those lugs, would you? All right. I'd like to put a lug nut on here. Where's the four-way for this? Way down there. Can you hand me that four-way? Again, I'm just going to take a quick picture of the of the setup here on how I've got this set up so you guys can see this. Don't judge me, eh? Wrong size. Don't judge me, eh? Excuse me. Oops. Okay. Can you speed that up a little? I know that. They're a little stiff. Okay. Once I've got the lug nut on here, the reason why I put the lug nut on, guys, is to so that the rotor, as far as, won't move, and I can use that to pry with. And again, I'm just going to take and pry in and pry out. And again, you can see here, there's maybe about a thousandth of an inch movement, okay, on that. Okay, and that's it. That's all you need to do in order to measure both up and down and in and out movement on a ball drum. How much movement could be in it?